our guest today. I was super excited to get him on here after 500 emails with your <laughs> oh, yeah? with your agent. I just emailed him every day. I'm like, like I'm an get easy me. get. I don't know why I was playing hard to get. <laughs> he was playing really hard to get. Yeah. That's a really good thing. Yeah. Because like, he made it seem like really like. I'm like, I'll do it. I'll do it. And he's like, no, no, hold on. We've got to make him want it. <laughs> like he's honestly, he made me really pursue you. Because most people, I'll be like, you know what? Fuck it, you know? But then it's a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, it's everybody. It's psychology. It's like hot girl stuff. Just, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what hot girls do. Mm -hmm. Guys, Fahim Amwar. Fahim oh, Amwar's here. You. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nina would clap, too, but she's She was only barking guy. when I came in, but she, now she loves me. She was excited for you to be here. I guess. She knew you, how excited You claim it as an excitement, but... No, she loves that you're here. Trust me, she's very happy. She already tried to kiss you. She's going to try true, to make out true. with you halfway through the podcast. That's her thing. Um, so I'm so glad you you you're here. You talk about we just talked Thank about you having me. Before, you're welcome. Before he came in, we talked about how living in the valley is much better than yeah. You just hit a certain age. Like I think like WeHo and everything's for your twenties. Right. Like, you have to live next to the nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> for like like if the nightclub had a room to rent, you would live there and just go downstairs the club and then go like you forget that cars exist. You don't have to like hemorrhage your entire <laughs> savings just to like live next to the waffle or whatever. <laughs> What's the waffle? I don't know some bre like brunch, just like your priorities uh, in your twenties and everything. Like, right? You don't have to be in the epicenter of it. I mean, I guess that's very important to you in those formative years it or whatever. It was right. Sure, but then you get to a certain age, you're like, oh, freeways exist. Uber I could, exists. I, Uber exists. I could be in my car for like twenty to thirty minutes, and I don't really lose much. Like what I gain. For what I'm losing, it just it's just true. like oh, you start thinking like an adult. Yeah, finally, like, right? Why am I just pouring all this rent money to like live in a shit box next to the club? I used to pay five thousand dollars a month to Jesus. live in a in a, a a two bedroom small cottage off of Larchmont. Yeah, and and there was a guy who was just mugging people every day on my street. And you're like, eh, it's not gonna happen to me. Yeah, and Tough actually, break for all my neighbors, <laughs> but. <laughs> but like, thank God it never happened to me. But I would come outside almost every day, and there would be police there. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I'm paying so much money yeah. to live in a place where people are getting mugged every like every day. This guy didn't give a fuck. He would come back to my street every day, and he was mugging people in the morning. But I sleep in until three p.m. You're like, so I'm safe. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm I'm outside of the mugging hours. I should be good. <laughs> Unless he switches it up, <laughs> God forbid he. Like, what if he didn't set his alarm to mug? <laughs> and he's like, ah, fuck, I gotta do some PM mugging. And, that's, and that's then I just get, get fucked. totally yeah. fucked. But I was like safe because I'd wake up at be 3 p.m. I'd come out and I'd be like, what's happening? My neighbors were like, seven people got mugged. Like, what? Where were you? He just went up and down the street with a gun. Jesus. And was just mugging women as they were getting in their cars. Old women. There's all these old women that lived on my street. Mm -hmm. I know, and I was like, I get my blanket. I was like, wow, it sucks for you guys. Yeah, you're like, thank God I'm not old. You just think you can get away faster and it won't it won't hit you. I just run, he shoots me in the back of the Yeah. <laughs> Do you think the women see, they're like, oh, no, like from like three blocks away. <laughs> oh, not again. <laughs> it was horrible, so I finally moved, and I ended up, it was like right when I started dating my husband, I moved to Calabasas. Mm -hmm. And at first, I was really sad. Cause it's it's a totally different. It's slower for sure. Oh, so slow. Yeah, and far. It's far, yeah. But then it's like you know, you actually guys. Here's the cool thing about a commute: you give your, you get time to yourself. Yeah, it's almost like people claim they hate cars in L.A. and driving and all that, but it's a meditation box if you treat it right. Like I don't have road rage or anything. <laughs> I just kind of think a lot. Yeah. I don't have road rage. I, I kind of have like road sarcasm. Like if somebody cuts me off, I'm like, oh, nice one. <laughs> you like, put that, down. That, that, yeah, I just. I'm like, oh, okay, guy. Do you ever put down the window and tell them to put their window down and go, nice one? <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't need an audience. It's kind of more for me. But I, I'll be in cars with people, and they're unhinged. And really? These are, yeah, like I remember I used to I used to carpool. I was like uh, working for the summer at this insurance company, and my cousin worked there as well. She's like my older cousin, uh -huh. like lovely human being and all that. But I, I just got like a fr like a front row seat to road rage, <laughs> and I didn't know she had that in her. It was crazy. I'm like, Whoa. she was like a perfectly nice cousin, and then yes. you got in the car, and she you get was in the like, car, and it's like, get the fuck time. out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Why are you stopping? It's green. <laughs> yeah. God. So, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That happens to people. Some people really have it mm -hmm. bad. I mean, uh, like I see it too. I don't have it. I just feel like I have no control over. It. Like you get there when you get there, it's gonna be plus or minus five minutes. Right. Why Who cares? go crazy? Yeah, it's like chill out. I actually had a guy follow me 
one time uh-huh. in his fucking monster truck that he Jeez. was driving, his, like lifted truck that had like truck nuts yeah. on it. Like he was from San Diego. Just uh, I had a sketch idea where like the truck nuts, a doctor comes and he tells the guy that like his truck nuts has cancer, you know, <laughs> and they have to like, he's like, we're going to get through this. <laughs> and the truck has to get an operation and has one of them removed. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I just, Why did like, you never do that? Uh, sometimes I'll have these, there's varying degrees. Like I'm a stand-up and sketch guy, you know, and I'll have, I just love ideas. Right. And I'll put them in different boxes and everything. Some of them are just so high production that the amount of work, I'm like, all right, I need like a TV show to, it's just a lot of work. And then some of them are simple enough where I can just bang it out with an iPhone I could at my shoot place. the truck nuts thing with you. Easy. Interesting. If you got a doctor's uniform oh, yeah. and you went up to the guy like, I'm sorry, if can- he has cancer. Yeah. And, like you could do it and then we could cut the balls. I could totally do that. <laughs> That's not high production. I guess it depends how high production you want to go with it. Do you want to get like a doctor's office <laughs> and like an ER room? Yeah. Because to me it's funny to see like a, like a Toyota Tacoma in an operating <laughs> room and like nurses <laughs> oh, you were and, thinking and like of going hairnet. like full out. Yeah, yeah and yeah. just like looking through the door and there's like a truck in there with like tubes hooked up to it. <laughs> you have a fucked up brain. I guess so. When did you realize that? Uh, I don't know. Like, And what's weird is, I, I guess I, I realized it kind of later in life. Or I don't think it's weird because I live with me all the time, you know? Are you live by yourself? Well, I'm, yeah, now, I, yeah, I do. Uh-huh. But like growing up, I had a brother and everything. Uh-huh, you know? uh-huh. But I think it's part of the separation of me not thinking I have a weird brain is because when you're in your own skin, you don't think it's weird, right? Right. Because you're with this brain 24 7. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's. Uh, and then culturally, too, I think because my parents are from Afghanistan. Uh huh. And there is this kind of underlying conformist attitude when it comes to you're not too crazy. You know, there's the family name as well. And so. Right. There's certain things you do, get good grades, be respectful and all that. So I guess I have like a weird brain inside of that. Right. So my brain doesn't match that conformity. Oh, yeah, it doesn't. I've got like a hype beast brain in like <laughs> a conformist body or something, you know? like Do your parents a, get mad about it? Like are they ever no, like too I do, much? No, it's in a subdued way. Like yeah. it's never in a way that I'm not getting like piercings and shit and like it's just the way I think is weird. What would you do if you're like parents- no one even knows I do stand up when they meet me or anything like really uh, you would have to know me pretty well. Yeah. But if you introduce me to your friends and be like, oh, hi. Very normal. Right. They're like, wow, this guy's just kind of quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he works at Geico. <laughs> Probably. Or like I do insurance or something. Just my natural baseline is to lay in the cut. And if someone loves to talk, I, I would love to just let them talk like I hate fighting to talk. Are you an introvert? I guess so. With the ability to be an act, like I, when I perform, there's a time and place. Mm-hmm. And if I'm with a friend at a diner or something, and I've known them for a while, I could be more me. Mm-hmm. But if if it's someone new, I'm not gonna be bouncing off the walls, right? Because I don't I don't really know them yet, you know. Fuck! I was really hoping we could get some wall action. Here. Some <laughs> wall action, and that's the trouble with stand up, like the preconceived notions of stand up comedians. Because I think more slant that way, just like always yeah. on and like everything's a gag. Like, whoa, you know, like 24 7 gags. Always performing. Yeah, just like. <laughs> but if I see an opening, I'll do a joke, but I like substance and conversation first. Totally. And then gag when it's there. I like that. Yeah, you know, you're so right, actually. And then there's actually some stand ups that I've met where I was expecting them to be so funny in person. Yeah. And they were just regular sure just fucking not one joke uh-huh. didn't crack a smile i was like all right yeah cool to meet you like people who are even more subdued than like me or just like really serious guys yeah who's the most serious stand-up you would say right now like when you talk to him you'd be like wow this guy's really serious uh i don't know there are it's hard to like off the top of my head to think of one and i don't want to throw a serious person under the bus no it's not <laughs> under the bus no I was like like when I met Bill Burr for the first uh-huh. time I was like he's very like although I think he's very funny yeah obviously. oh he's great and he but he's kind of like the un, like he'll just, yeah, he'll just have a conversation he'll just talk and be funny he's not here trying to be like do act outs you know what I mean I yeah and I think it, it kind of matches up stylistically with what he does because he really dissects things a lot so so crazy and well on stage and like really high level and uh-huh controversial things as well so the way he goes about it is pretty methodical so the fact that he's just kind of a thoughtful dude and just conversationally kind of makes sense yeah whereas the people who are kind of more 
bounce off the walls or whatever yeah. on stage, I think are more apt to like Robin Williams it off yeah. off stage. Joe Coy very had him here bouncing off the oh, walls. Oh really? Yeah, I, lo- yeah, I loved yeah, it. Yeah. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Very fun. There's a chart. I love Joe. He was the first headliner to have me open for him. Really? Yeah. I just saw him at the forum. He did great. Um, that's so funny. Wow, I love it, and I'm so glad you're here. And I love seeing the the diversity between all the comics that have been on this podcast. It's just yeah, so you're funny. an equal opportunity employer. I am. I like I'll it. take anybody. Yeah. I'm like, hey, they don't talk. Bring them on the podcast. Uh-huh. <laughs> But I want to talk about um, some of your worst. And, right. I, and before we started, I said, do you ever have any worst dates or did you have like a worst childhood or anything like that or a worst experience getting bullied? You were like, no. Yeah, pretty tame. Like, I can't think of anything. Some people will have stories and I'm like, oh, man, I wish I had something like that. Nothing traumatic. Maybe if I have, I've blocked it out and I can't. <laughs> I don't know. You <laughs> or I was like, I was I was molested. When I was <laughs> now that you bring it up, I was blocking it out for a while. But yeah, that was that was pretty bad. <laughs> oh, my God. We that was the worst. It. Said he had toys, but there were no toys. It was a you lie. grew up in Seattle. Grew up in Seattle. The burbs, you know, but no one knows the suburbs of Seattle, so you no just say one. Seattle. Did it rain a lot? Yeah, of course. All the time. Yeah. What, why Seattle? You think your parents wanted? Oh, to Oh, I actually there? know why. why. So my dad, you know, my parents are from Afghanistan, right? And so my dad came to the U.S. and studied at college, and he got an engineering degree. And then they were coming around the colleges, like job fairs and stuff. Uh-huh. And then Boeing was there to recruit. Oh. And so there's a brochure, and they see the Seattle skyline. The brochure looked nice, and they were, they have no idea. They're like, yeah, all right, we'll go. <laughs> we'll go. To, there's a job there. And so that's how they ended up in, in the Seattle area. And then did your dad work for Boeing? Yeah, he still works at Boeing. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah, he's been there forever. I worked at Boeing for like three and a half years. What did you do? Engineering. You were an engineer? I was an engineer. Stop. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how did you get from working in, as an engineer to becoming out here? It's just like a really methodical plan to do stand-up comedy because I knew I wanted to do stand-up when I was 18. So I was doing stand-up when I was 18, right out of high school. In so Seattle? That, yeah, that summer I just kept on going to the comedy clubs. And and then I still had to get a degree, though. My parents were going to pay for college, yeah. so engineering is basically the lowest I could do and them still pay for it. <laughs> for real, like I tried to do acting and all these other degrees, and they just said no. Aww. But in hindsight, I'm glad they said no because, like, just because I mean, you know this, just because you have an acting degree doesn't mean you're gonna be right a star. You walk They're into not... CAA with your yeah. acting degree. I graduated <laughs> yeah, with an yeah. acting degree. Yeah, whatever audition you go, you know, I have a theater degree. Like that means anything. <laughs> That's so true. They don't give that, a fuck. Like, yeah, how many roles have you heard? Is just some guy like. Was it Brandon Routh or whatever? He was like uh, like a bowling shoe guy or something. What? Yeah, he, I think he was working in a bowling alley or something. Or So, I don't know. Just when you're a kid, you think acting degree equals movie star. You're going to be a star. Yes. Guaranteed. That paper says it's no- I'm going to yeah, be famous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I'm glad they said no to that. So, I studied engineering and then I just applied to jobs in Southern California. And the plan was always to just work by day until I got to the point where I could do this stuff full time. Wow. And then so it took three and a half years for me to finally transition and do it full time. That's fast actually. I guess. And yeah. most people are like it took me twenty five years of grinding and hustling yeah. in the streets. Oh my God. Yeah. But the thing is like people they it sounds like it's so crazy and, and hard to do, but when you pursue your dreams or whatever, everyone has a day job anyways, right? True. Like you're, yeah. if not engineering, people are a waiter or yep. they're so that day is being cut out anyways. Right. So what's the difference between you know doing engineering as opposed to just saying like nah, I'm gonna pack up my car and go and yeah be a waiter. Like <laughs> you can have a career, and a lot of those people still went to college anyways. Right. That's so true. So why not use those four years? That's smart. And now you have a you know not that you'll ever need. I it. know. I was always thinking how funny it'd be if I ever did try to go back to engineering, and they're like, <laughs> "Can you explain this?" 10 year gap in employment. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I remember it all though. I remember how, I know how planes fly. It's like a lift thing, right? <gasps> you try to come back, you try to build planes. <laughs> yeah. They're like, no, we're good. You know, what is we're this? <laughs> You're like, it's I can entertain I the whole crew while they're oh, building planes. I should just be a Southwest flight attendant <laughs> and just tear it up. I'll just be raw as fuck. Y'all motherfuckers ready to fly? I had this one sketch idea where it was like a, you know how they they always try to be funny on the Southwest flights? Always. Always. So Because they a, know how shitty the airline is. Well, it's a captive audience and just people. I, I did a bit about it on my first special where, like, I as a comedian, I'm so envious of the Southwest flight attendants because the crowd on a plane is so fucking easy. So easy. They give it up for anything, you know? <laughs> 
He's like, at this time, will everybody turn off all iPhones, Blackberries, and Blueberries? And people are like, and people like share that shit on Facebook. Like, this is the bar? I've been the shows, and you're much more discerning than you're being on Facebook right now. But just for some reason, everyone loses their minds when they're on a Southwest flight. So I wanted to do a sketch where there was like a, because you know they get a big head. These Southwest flight attendants, they they think they're crushing it. Yeah, they're killing so there's it. A, yeah, there's a sketch of a guy who's like, you know, he does and everyone's laughing, and then uh, another flight attendant's like, oh, this is like uh like Leroy. We he's from our New York um, leg. He's gonna fly with us today. He's gonna do the announcement. He's like, oh, all right. <laughs> I do it pretty well, but uh, okay. And then Leroy's like, uh, yo, what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> and, there was, and everyone's like, ah, yeah, ah, like running up and down. Yeah, running up. It's like an Apollo crowd, you know? And he's like doing insult comedy. Like, look at this ball, motherfucker, over here. Cue ball. You go, you have one Q-ball bottle. Head of, yeah, yeah. He's like, you probably have one bottle of shampoo you've been using your whole life. And I was like, ah, ah, stomping their feet. And this guy's like, the first guy's like, I can't follow this. <laughs> This guy's crushing. And then he tries to do the blueberries thing. And yeah, everyone's- yeah, yeah, and everyone's dead <laughs> silence. And then, and then, like the black guy on the plane, just he puts a siren up, like, like it's the Apollo, and he gets sand manded <laughs> off. <laughs> well, you need to do these things. Yeah, I just have so many of them. Sometimes, uh, someone's gonna listen to this podcast and just steal all your ideas. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Two weeks later on Facebook, you see a sketch. <laughs> Truck nuts getting removed, flight attendant I know. killing it. Oh my god, that's fucking hilarious. Thanks. Yeah, like I wish I. I love I had these the time. ideas. I have so many. I, I don't know what to do with. I wish you could just have like a show where you do everything. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Right? Mm. Where you play. You know, I've been doing that a little bit on 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 Instagram because, like I said, I'm always stand up is my first thing. It's my main thing. I've been doing it forever. I love stand up, and then I also love sketch. Yeah. And part of the reason I got into stand up is because I loved SNL growing up. And I was like, how do people get on that show? Yeah. And they came through Sketch, like Groundlings, UCB, right. Second City, or they, they did stand-up. Mm-hmm. And I researched it all. I'm like, oh, stand-up seems more doable for me. Right. So I just have all these sketch ideas. And and we did a sketch show. You know Hassan Minaj? Minaj? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were doing yeah. like YouTube sketch back in the day Yeah. for like two years on YouTube and like, no one really gave a fuck. <laughs> like they were, I they know. were really good. They were really good sketches. Yeah. With like no money, we really stretched our dollars, and they looked great. Um, but, but just the town didn't really. Things. Yeah, it was like four brown dudes doing great <laughs> sketch. That was the angle because you got to have an angle in this town, you know. So the angle was like four brown dudes doing really thought provoking sketch. That's not like all brown, but right. when we do, we do it in a smart way and, yeah. and can go there and play that card. And then, like maybe a year or two ago, we did the Comedy Central. They had us do a sketch uh, special. I thought I remembered something like that. Yeah. yeah so yeah. what didn't work out in our YouTube days? They're like, they wanted us to do a one-hour sketch special, and so right. we got to do that, and that was so fun for me because these really higher-level ideas that I have, yeah, like high production value. Life. Yeah. So there's like money and a budget, so I got to do some really cool sketches. But then, <laughs> then it was over, you know. And I still have all these, um, I'll have these ideas, and sometimes I'm like, oh, I could just do it as myself, and I'll yes. do it, I'll do it quick and dirty on IG. Yes, and it's just purely idea driven. Guys, go to Fahim Fahim Anwar yeah, on yeah. Instagram. Go to his Instagram and watch these sketches <laughs> and give him some love. Give me some love. Give him some fucking love, you guys. It's so hard on YouTube. Like, to, oh if well, there was a like, there was a heyday and yeah, like where there was underground um, indie YouTube sketch. Yeah, there was an appetite for it and a right. marketplace. Right, but I think Facebook video kind of like <laughs> fucked it up. They fucked everything up. because but, but, everyone started going to there and they were kind of like bullshitting what a view is actually. They were kind of like inflating their views. Yep. So they just tore apart that whole ecosystem. And Facebook Watch, like all that. Yeah, because back like, in the day, everywhere. Good Neighbor was killing it. I loved Good Neighbor. Do you know Good Neighbor at all? What's that? That was Nick Rutherford, Kyle oh Mooney. Oh my god, I love Nick Rutherford. Nick was great. I did yeah, a movie Nick, with him. Oh yeah, so like that whole crew, uh, Kyle Mooney and Beck Bennett. Oh my god, I love all of them. Yeah, That's so they so were so funny. I feel like SNL kind of threw a wrench into something really special with those guys. They it kind took of it Kyle broke them and up. Beck, but they yeah. left Nick. <laughs> Well, Nick was on as a writer, you know, oh, for a did? few okay, years. Okay, okay, just kidding. But but they were just so unique, and yeah. there was something special. And I, as a fan, I just kind of wish they they got to stay on that track for longer. I know, but it's like you can't turn down SNL. But you can't. 
The trouble with SNL is you got to be everything to everybody. Yeah. Whereas Good Neighbor was so specific and so funny. Uh, it's a shame that some really good shit doesn't get seen by enough people. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I'd never seen it. I'm going to look it up now. Yeah, look at look at some of their YouTube sketches. It's good great. Good Neighbor. Like, Your Mom's a MILF is one of my favorites. <laughs> That's with Beck. And That's forget. amazing. Okay, wait. So, did you ever audition for SNL? Uh, one, kind of, I guess. Maybe, like, this is before we did Goat Face on Comedy Central. Um, they were doing auditions at I.O. West. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't, wow. Or, or, or uh... Improv Olympic. Okay. Or is that the same thing? It is IO. IO Improv yeah, Olympic. Yeah, yeah. So I just did like five minutes of stand up on it. So it wasn't like the New York one. I think that's right. like a real, real flown audition. Out yeah, and you yeah, yeah. Wait so that was just like... like a local one. Did stand up on it. Never heard anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I did what I wanted to. Like all you can ask for as a performer when you get these opportunities is like, did I do what I wanted to do out there? And if you did, the rest is out of your hands because sometimes yeah. it sucks when you do an audition or something and you're like, well, that's not even the thing I wanted to do. Right. Because if you don't get it coupled with that, that sucks. That's but if the you, worst. But if you're like, I did it and you don't get it, you got to be at peace with that. Right. Because that's all you can do. That's my that's my thing. When I go into an audition and I know I fucking crushed it and did what I could, if I, didn't, if I don't yeah. get it, I'm like, that's on them. Totally. <laughs> Idiots. What are they, blind? What yeah. are they, a blind person casting? Uh-huh. <laughs> Deaf and blind person casting? Yeah. Psh, don't choose me. Psh. Fuck it. Yeah, you it's know? a good attitude to have. Um, so you wanted to tell me some of your worst were about auditions. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to tell you two of them. Do you want to tell me two? Okay, just tell me one first. This is the first one I ever did. So, you know, I mentioned I was working at Boeing. I was uh-huh. I was half-stepping it for a while. So I would, I'd be in my cubicle doing engineering by day. And then I'd, I got a manager kind of towards the end, you know. And uh-huh. so she would get me these auditions. And I had to be pretty picky with my auditions because I couldn't just like blow off work, work all the time. time. Yeah. I could only take a long lunch or a doctor's appointment. <laughs> Every, like my grandfather could only yeah, die yeah, so many yeah, times. So many times. <laughs> I said my dad, my granddad was a cat, so he had nine. <laughs> I had nine of them. So I went to this one audition, uh, and I had never auditioned before, you know. So I don't know how it works or anything. So I go in the room, and they have the camera set up, right? And then she goes, "Yeah, thanks for coming in." Blah blah blah. Um, just, just uh, why don't you just slate for the camera? Oh, you didn't know what that meant. How would I know? <laughs> I've never auditioned in my life before, and I want to see. I want to seem like a professional. Yeah, like I do this all the time. I don't want to seem so green. Yeah. So she's like, "Yeah, just slate for the camera," and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, cool." <laughs> and I just figured if I said "Yeah, cool," it'll buy me enough time to use like deductive reasoning oh to figure God. out what that means. So I go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, cool," <laughs> and then I'm just like trying to piece it together, and then I go. What, what does that mean? <laughs> like that's way worse. Why did I say? Why did I say yeah, cool? <laughs> I go yeah, cool. Shh. What does that mean? <laughs> She's all checking the paper. His name's definitely not yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, I should have just walked out of the audition after I said, "What does that mean?" <gasps> yeah, cool. What does that mean? This way. <laughs> <laughs> what was it for? I forget. Was it for some big shit? Uh, probably not. Uh yeah, probably not. But what did she say then when you were like... She's like, then she told me what it was and I like, never forgot. Now I know, yeah. yeah. It's like you say your name in your ca- into the camera. Yeah. I go, oh, okay. Isn't that I the... I go, why don't you just say that? I know. <laughs> what, what's up All with... All these the, Hollywood terms. The Hollywood slate your name. Slate. But she didn't slate. even say slate your name. She just said slate the camera. Wow. But what does that's that say? Really maybe my confusing. look, maybe my look just kind of exuded, I'm a pro. That's And a, I that's would know what that means. See? I have a theory about auditioning. What's your theory? The more you look like you don't give a fuck, even if you're like not prepared, but just exude this like, I don't need this confidence, I feel like casting directors get a boner off that. Like I, I think uh, the ideal scenario is like I show up to the audition on a motorcycle, right? And in this shirt, but maybe tighter even. And then my hair's like even longer than it is now. So I, go, <laughs> I show up to the audition. Your motorcycle sounds yeah, like yeah, farts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have the Harley fart model. <laughs> it's a new one, you know? So, you know, I show up, I put the kickstand on, I take the helmet off. Like, I don't even care if my hair... You know how some people will dress for the role they're auditioning for? Yes, they're like in a 1960s is, yes. like soldier's uniform. <laughs> I've been to an audition before where like, it's for a doctor and the dude straight up had a stethoscope and a, like, he was ready for them to say action. Like, he already got it in his mind. He came makeup ready. I'm dying. 
he he had like the the Kleenexes around his <laughs> collar, and he's like, and he hasn't even done a pre read yet. Oh my god okay so, so you show up, you on, show up on the heart. motorcycle <laughs> take the helmet off and then you just enter the and you're wearing iron ranger boots <laughs> this is very specific and you've had them for a while they've been resold that's how long you've had them so i'm crying sorry you're making me laugh i'm crying so then you get into the room and they call your name and then you're like yeah what <laughs> yeah what yeah, what? And then you just have these scraps of paper, and then um, you obviously it's obvious this is the first time you're actually reading these words, <laughs> and then you just do your best with it, and you just kind of shoot them a look like that, and then you leave, and they're like, "Who was that?" He's our guy. <laughs> it's like he doesn't even want this. Yeah. Whereas there's another guy who just killed it in the room. They're like, oh, "Fuck that guy." <laughs> who, who's the guy who came underprepared? And didn't dress for the part. I feel like you're so right. Yeah, there's just something about that. This whole town runs on, um, oh, he doesn't want this. or Like fake ego. Fake ego or real ego or yeah. just like showing desire for something is unattractive. Or it's like the aloofness is kind of, or can we get him, is more attractive than... We can get them. Dude, and that's with everything. Yeah, dating, yeah, yeah. Dating, like a girl could be the coolest girl, so hot, like amazing personality, but then if she likes you too much, you're like, whoa. Totally. Whoa, what's funny? wrong with this girl yeah, like yeah. me too much? <laughs> I'm definitely like, not that likable. My mom doesn't like me this much. This is, this is too much pressure. Isn't that kind of crazy? Yeah. And then I talk to my girlfriends, because when I go into an audition, I take it so seriously, yeah. and I fucking, I make sure I'm off book, even if it's 13 pages, yeah. like, I train with a coach, I fucking, I care so much, I care about what, I'm that guy, the totally. stethoscope guy, I'm with I'm with the hair and the mm -hmm. makeup, I go in character, and then I have friends who have been on shows forever, booked so much shit, they're like, yeah, no, I just go in with the sides and, like, read them. <laughs> yeah. And they book it. They book it. I'm like, what the fuck? I think there's a happy medium. <laughs> like, you want to be prepared, obviously. Right, right. But then also, this appearance of, like, not needing it is alluring. It's so good. Even with stand-up, you know? Like, I always think of stand-up, I'm just exchanging ideas, and I, these ideas make me laugh, and I hope the audience likes them as well, so right. I'm just kind of, like, planting these seeds out there. I don't need anything from the audience. And it's, that's, like, a big part of stand-up comedy. I think good stand-up comedy because sometimes you'll see people on stage and you could tell the comic needs something from the audience and it's off-putting. Right, like they tell a joke and then they're like... <laughs> <laughs> like they need the hole in them to be filled. Me, and every then, day and, of my life. And then you'll get some like, ah, just, just to fuel that, right? And it's just yes. like, it, it feels, as an audience member, you just want to be entertained. You don't want to feel like you're having to make this person whole. True. And the same is true of auditions, I think, where it's like... Um, you could tell when someone's like, <laughs> who puts everything, all their eggs into this one audition. Like, look, I really need this. Yeah, I need this. I'm and, and I no, got child support. Totally. <laughs> no matter how much you've prepared and all, yeah. um, it's just, it's going to, or even if you try to play it cool, it's going to seep through. It's going to come across. Yeah. So if you really get to a, a place emotionally and career wise where like you, you want it to go well, but if it doesn't, it's okay. And I think stand-up helps that for me, that when I do audition now, that like, I have other stuff going on. It's good to be busy. Right. Have a lot of things going on right. so that you're not like, the worst is like actors when they have nothing going on in their life and they don't even diversify. And when they get one audition, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? that's not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's everything. Then it's like cancel everything for a week. They'll practice one line. And then when they get in there, they've just rehearsed it so many times, they don't even talk like a human would. It comes out weird. Yeah, like, how are you? <laughs> no, where the bathroom is? Like, you've made so many choices with 10 words. Like, you've had too much time with too little material, and now you look like an alien. Dude, this is so true. I feel so called out right now, because I do this that This is everybody, shit. though. I Everyone's done that. It. I yeah. overthink it. I'm like, fuck. God damn it. Like, and it's true. Like, if I get like a really big audition for like a big movie or something, yeah. I do cancel everything the whole week. I'm like, fuck it. I gotta, I gotta focus. I squeeze the paper. The paper has fucking <laughs> fingerprints in it. <laughs> I've always thought this idea too. Like, if you're trying to play this cool as a cucumber actor in there, but you're like secretly terrified and, and just like the sides are shaking. <laughs> they go, can you give me a note? Can you do it? Like, yeah. Yeah, cool. And you hold it and you like rip it in half. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you guys, do you have another sides? These ones were thin. Oh my god. 
god I, I do that too like i try not to hold the sides because my hands are usually shaking i try to put them like behind my or on my back just or your like... character is always this is the second time you've been laid at home are you seeing someone else yeah can we do it with the hands not clasped this time i got it i got it <laughs> where have you been because if they're out here it's just shake city i can't have them at my sides yeah. Oh my god, you guys! I'm fucking dying. I'm, I'm crying right now. I'm actually this weeping. This is so inside baseball. You're making me laugh so hard, and I'm sorry for everyone that lives in Idaho. This is such an LA podcast I right know. now, but you know what? Fuck it. You need to experience what we experience. We're gonna take a quick break, and then we are gonna be right back talking about more worse first with Fahim Anwar. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back. <laughs> oh, okay, hey, what's up? That was quick. A lot <laughs> happened. You- too bad we can't tell them about all the craziness that happened in the studio. Dude, we did so much shit on so the break. It much. was fucking bananas. Nina took five shits on the table. It was well, insane. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, they pretty big for a tiny dog. Thanks for being nice because some people don't Dude, like dogs. That's so weird. How do you not like dogs? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe if they bit you as a child. That's true. I think, I think that's the only pass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I tell you a story really quick? Yeah. And I know this is about you, so I'm- No, make, please. I'm making my story No, short. I'm all for it. Speaking of dogs, so my friend- he gets this, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, um, German Shepherd, mm-hmm. right? And he gets it, and it's a police German Shepherd, uh-huh. right? And he's a canine trained. He's a puppy, so he's in training. Yeah. And it's it, he's like, oh, he's the nicest dog, and he's really well trained. And I was like, oh, great! Like I can't wait to meet him, right? And yeah. so I show up, and I have this orange um, furry coat on. Oh my god! He's probably <laughs> used to training with that, and wanted to like chomp your arm off. All right, so you just finished the story for me. I go up to this dog. I'm like, hi. And I I hear the owner go, oh, no. And then he runs at me and he fucking bites my arm. Guys, this happened last week. He clamps on my arm and starts going like this. And I'm like, ugh. (laughs) Like, I love dogs. So I'm like, get off, buddy. (laughs) I guess that's the danger of even when one of those dogs retires. Uh, Yeah. Anytime it sees a super puffy jacket. (laughs) He remembers when he was a pup. <laughs> it's just like his eyes bang. went like laser. <laughs> just anybody in a puppy jacket. Like, ah, he ah. attacked me and he bit down on my arm so hard. And I had this like, thank God, like the jacket was really thick. It was like a thick, fluffy orange jacket. He was ripping my arm and I was like, ah, and like the oh. owner came and took him off. And I was like, it's OK, buddy. Like, I still try to like love him. Yeah. But he fucking kept trying to attack me. And he's like, you got to take your coat off. And then he shows me the video of this dog ripping a guy, like a dummy's yeah, arm off who's wearing Jesus. orange. Because they train him with orange. Oh, that's the... The color. Seems like Because I they should they fix figure, that. like, most people aren't going to be walking around with an orange jacket. This psycho, yeah. Like, I will wear it. Yeah. I don't mind looking like a clown. I mean, but... thank God that he knows you and it wasn't some random... You too, right? Right? Yeah. Isn't that kind of crazy? I imagine if I was a burglar or something or a thief, I would just always wear one of those giant jackets... <laughs> Cause then I would be, I would just break in the houses and have like a giant. <laughs> that way I'm a, I'm impervious. I'm like silly dog. I have like a puppy the hockey, jacket on. Hockey gear on, like whatever it is. I don't even know what it is. Like scary. I know. But that was really scary for me. I'm sure. Cause I love dogs, and it was like so you're really conflicted. sad. But I, I will still love the dog. Like even though he bit me really hard, I was yeah. like, I still love it. Like it's all good. Well, you know? yeah, it makes sense. Do you That's have a trained. dog? No, I don't. I like other people's dogs, though. Do you want a dog or no? You're too busy. I don't know. I, I kind of like the freedom of just up and, up and leaving and doing yeah. a show or, like, you know, touring and stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of, I like a dog, but it's a little bit yeah. of a burden. Like, oh, I got to get back home. I got to feed it. I got to, it's a responsibility. Pet it. Pet it, yeah. Touch it. I could do that. <laughs> what if I hire, like, a robot just to pet it every now and then? Like a feeder? <laughs> like, why do you even have a like dog? A, like a Roomba with arms. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. just me. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. He just comes over. Time to pet yeah, nice <laughs> dog. It's just fucking all robotic. The dog's not even into it. Just the dog's scared this of it. Again. Oh my god. Okay, wait. So we were talking about auditioning. Yeah. And you said the first story was that you didn't know what slate your name meant. Yeah. Which is or no, embarrassing. Just slate. Because if they said name, I would have figured yeah, it out. Slate. Yeah. yeah they just slate, said the, slate camera. the camera. Which is. Like turn, no one turn knows what on. that means if you don't live totally. in LA or if you've never auditioned. So yeah, you're okay. That's Thank you. that's not bad. I feel like that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just but it is a weird moment where you're trying to look like a pro and you don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah, that's true. 
Um, okay, so what was the second one that was so bad? Second one was. I love that all your worst are just auditions. I just chose it to be a theme because I remember those vividly. Right. The, you still to, think about them. Every yeah, day. I still think about them every now and then. Um, <gasps> oh my god, I can't believe I was crying. Oh, so another. Oh yeah. So like, I don't really do it anymore. But back in the day, I would go out on commercial auditions. Uh huh. D- did you do those? I'd still do them. Okay. Yeah, I'm desperate. <laughs> Well, I'm just, I feel like I'm no good at them. That's the thing. Oh. Yeah. Like, I'll book some theatrical stuff, right. some like TV and, and film stuff sometimes, just because I feel like there's a ramp up or I I can kind of sit with it and, you know, get some steam with some dialogue. Right. With commercials, it's like being shot out of a cannon. You have <laughs> you have like one line and you have to hit it. It's so precise. True. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. I haven't yeah. booked any, so. <laughs> yeah. So I would Clearly go, I would go right. out on all these auditions and I would just never book so finally I was just like fuck it yeah I don't want, I don't want to because I'd always have to drive to Santa Monica at like 5 yeah. 5 p.m. Oh, we've got an audition God. for you in Santa Monica why is it always that I don't know Ugh, it's like and unless you want to piss you off totally and if you're not booking then it's just what am I doing with my life I'm just in traffic all the time I for feel no like reason you should be offer only people know you and yeah your I stuff. should be yeah <laughs> that's a good point your agent and you, you, you turned me into a monster I'm like <laughs> I should be offer only hey guys I'm not auditioning anymore, okay? Tell them to slate their own camera. You I only hear action. I don't hear slate. You fucking know who I am. You leave the podcast, you scream at your agent. Yeah, why? Why, why am I not, not offer only? Only? I mean, you have enough work out there, and people who aren't even comedians know your name. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like, I will I'm, get, so like, some of my, fr- I'm at a point now, it's kind of nice, the longer you do an art form or whatever, your peers... Grow. Hire you. Yeah. And nice. and then you're just doing stuff with your buddies. Right. Which I and love. That's very cool. True. And that's the way I mean it kind of should be as you rise in any kind of field. You just want to work with your friends and stuff. Even True. when I did Goatface or I just want to work with people, oh, I know they could do the job. Because I've been doing stand up with them for years and it's great to have this shorthand mm-hmm. where you just know who you need. Or yeah. it was kind of cool too when we were trying to fill out some roles for the show to be on the other end of casting where we would just get all these audition popping up on there's this client they use this web client and uh-huh. you get to see there'll be a role for like dave or something and there'll be like 10 10 links and you just click on these auditions did you love that did you feel so I loved powerful it. like when i was watching it, i'm like oh this is what i should be doing <laughs> this is the side i should have been on the whole time the chooser i can do this yeah yeah i love the chooser the chooser it's like god yeah. You're picking people's fates. He's going to be able to pay his rent this month, not him. <laughs> yeah, but it's not even that. It's just sort of, and being on that end of it, you kind of, it helps you even on the, in front of the camera yeah. end of it when you audition because you realize you have both perspectives. Just whoever serves the project. True. Like I never want to book a thing if I'm not right for it. If I'm not right for it, I'm not right for it and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Some people have this mentality of just like. I'm right for everything. <laughs> yeah, it should be me. It's going to be. Like I don't want to be in it unless they think I'm unless I'm the person for it. Right, and right. And if I'm not, that's okay. Yeah. Because I've been on both sides of it. Yes, you know? yes, that is true. I know, but isn't it funny? Because when you watch someone auditioning, you learn like, oh fuck, yeah, yeah. I should do that. Someone like, was saying, or we shouldn't do that. You know? Yeah. I do notice that. Someone was saying it's very helpful as an actor if you ever um, are like a casting assistant, and then you just get to see a bunch of auditions come through. You actually get to learn a lot just from seeing the way. Tons of other people audition. Like, oh, that's embarrassing. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Or do do that. Yeah. It's so funny. So there was a period of time where I was, I was just going on these auditions and stuff, these commercial auditions. Uh huh. And, and like, I hate, uh, also, it's different because you don't have a lot of time with the material. They'll like hit you up same day I or know. Day, day before, and you don't get the sides until you show up. So you'll have to like go to the, the space or whatever. And then that's the first time you're reading this thing. Yes. And even if it's one sentence or like two sentences, the way I work is like I like to sit with something for, I have my own process. I'm not like a show up and this is it. No, I can't do that. But that's what commercial acting is. I know, I hate it. It's just spring it on yeah. you, nail it. Yeah. They it, give it, it to you in the room. In the room, <laughs> yeah. Here, read this, quick. And a lot of times it. it's not even that many lines, but even that's kind of was kind of difficult for me. Mm-hmm. This one, maybe I had it maybe a day with it or it was just crazy dialogue. It was for like Ford trucks or something. And this guy's talking. It's, it's like a monologue about all this shit. I think, <laughs> it, was, I think it was with the rock too. Like the rock would have been. In, uh, and so there's just so much dialogue that you got to remember. Oh my God. 
And so I'm in the room and you walk into the room and it's always this. And I think some, the tricky thing too about being an established comedian is sometimes they just push you to the front of the line. Right? Yeah, because they're like, oh, he's here. Yeah, let him go. Yeah, or just, him. or yeah, yeah, yeah. They might just yeah. have this idea of you. And it's something you learn kind of later. It's just because you're talented at something doesn't mean you're right for everything. Right. Um, so you go into the room. So this is probably like kind of far into the process. Mm-hmm. So I think the casting people are there, the director's there. And then, so oh there's quite God, a bit the of people. There, yeah, 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 yeah. And they're always sitting like an abnormally far distance from where the audition is taking place, right? And there's a coffee table and there's this crazy spread. There's like, it's all this food that no one ever touches. Never. There's chocolate no covered strawberries, this yeah. crazy spread. And yeah. just, they're, on a, they're on a white couch and it's a glass and the coffee table. Has sunglasses on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just trying to make it as inviting as possible, right? Oh my God. They added echoes to my footsteps, <laughs> even though I was wearing sneakers. It's like, <laughs> They go, you mind if we sit further away from you? And then the chairs actually go, and the room expanded into a giant rectangle. And then, and then he had like a spyglass. And he goes, whenever you're ready. They have those theaters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whenever you're ready. You don't mind if I smoke. And all I can see is just the cherry of the cigarette. <sighs> the room is completely black. Yeah. There's a spotlight on you. Yeah. <laughs> like it's theater. And then it's this huge, it's this huge monologue. So I'm, I'm trying to, I do it. And it's like, yeah, but I even forget what the dialogue is. <laughs> and then, but I'm like fucking it up. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay I'll start, start with the, you know, yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, take your time. You know, it's one of those instances where everyone knows it's doomed. And you're but eating they try, shit. They, they try to they do try that to thing. Like, like, yeah, take all the time. But everyone knows this is, this is, this is like a train wreck, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, whatever you get. Yeah, you just, I mean, yeah, I'll take a look at it. But you're just like panicking. You're having a panic attack. Just went. We're trying to hide it. <gasps> oh my god. Yeah, I get it. All right. You, you want to do it from the from the top? <laughs> like, where else are you gonna take it from? You yeah, from the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. And then, uh, oh yeah, it's got for the in its class, and then uh, and then I just it happened like a few more times, and I just go like. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah. No, you didn't. Well, what, what's gonna happen? Did you say that? Yeah, I just go like. I'm uh, sorry. I, I fucking can't do this. <laughs> pretty much, and then I go. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. And I just like left. What's the alternative? How many times am I gonna fuck this up? <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe you did that. What's the end game? Usually I just bomb. Yeah. And just I'll bomb. I I I don't often bomb because I try to go prepared, but when I do. I'll just be like, cool, thank you so much, bye. Like, I, like it was great. Oh, you'll play it? <laughs> no, I mean, I just played it real. Like, I'm I'm here. I have a brain. I'm not a delusional performer. You get really real. You're like, look, I know you're not choosing me for this. I know I just ate a hot shit sandwich in front of everybody. Well, I didn't even go that far. I mean, that's the subtext, but just the fact of, like, I'm not even need- I'm not even trying it anymore. I'm just like, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Oh All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> what did they say? Uh, yeah, yeah, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> they're all okay bye <laughs> yeah no, they're like no no eat more shit come back try again give it another shot it's like in American Idol you know back in the day they would uh, I never understood this they would do the elimination thing right yeah I'd be like America voted and so and so is going home yeah and I was like oh he's gonna sing us out <laughs> why America hated him that was like torture. Yeah, that like was you embarrassing. You just got voted off, and you gotta you gotta like sing Earth, Wind, and Fire, and try not to cry. Why did they do that? But I don't understand <laughs> the logic of America likes you the least. Do what we hate you doing. <laughs> right. So true. That was America kinda... hated the way you sing. Sing us out. One more time. One more time. <laughs> Just remind us how Re- much we hate you. <laughs> Reinforce the decision America made. I feel like they did that sometimes to people that were really bad just to embarrass them even more. Like, remember the people that would go on there and be like, I believe yeah, I yeah, can yeah, fly. Yeah. Like, it's been my dream. Like, but they would just bring, it was kind of mean. Yeah. They, would, they would cast them yeah. knowing they were terrible. Well, there was a way. <laughs> It's an editing thing. You could always tell who's going to make it and who's not. Right. When they do a whole produced so package. Yeah, yeah. I used to have this she idea where, uh, and yeah, and there's family. like some yeah. burn victim or something, <laughs> some like rags to riches and like, you know, and then finally they repair my face and all this stuff. 
and then he's just terrible. He's like, I believe I can. <laughs> like, bang, bang, bang. like, why did they do a 30 minute produced piece if he was just going to get voted off? <laughs> That's funny. Because it is true. You know the people that they don't care about because they give them like one second. Yes. Like, here's Chris. He's from right. Idaho. Okay, yeah. Chris. <laughs> they just have a, a train wreck section. Or, yes. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of sad. Yeah, but yeah, that, they they torture people. All right, well, that's embarrassing, I guess. You. But that's like your worst things that's ever happened, and you're pretty lucky. I don't know if it's the worst. I just can't. Yeah, I can't think of anything. You blocked a lot out. Maybe I blocked it out. Yeah. 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 What about that's you? Good, what, 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 oh, I've had horrible life experiences. That's mm. why I started this podcast. It actually started because I've had so many bad things happen to me. You're like, let me talk it out. I was like, well, I can't afford therapy, so uh, what else is what's free? Yeah. Like, <laughs> let me make money off this therapy. <laughs> So I started doing this podcast because uh-huh. I, I I had so many. It was actually dates. It started with worst first dates. Yeah. Because I had gone on so many horrible dates. Yeah, it was bad. But uh-huh. now I'm married, so right. things are better. Yeah. Do you remember? Are you on Raya? I am on Raya. Do, can I tell you a funny story? Sure. <laughs> I tried to match with you on Raya. What? Really? A long time ago. Whoa. Yeah. You, know what's, you didn't I don't match re- me back. Uh. <laughs> you know what it is, though? <laughs> I think worst first podcast. No, no, no. I kind of have weird. I'm like Dexter when it comes to dating and stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like I have all these rules. Okay, can you tell me some? Yeah. All right. So <laughs> they can't. They can't do stand up. Oh. I don't do stand up because I do stand up. Right. And that's too weird for me. Right. Um, I mean it sucks though because, I mean a lot of stand ups will or some will just because, you see them around your work, you know everything, right. and, and it's just there. You're not even doing anything. Just right. like naturally, there will be opportunities because you're both doing the same thing. And you're there all the time. And you're there all the time. But that's kind of why I don't like it, though. Yeah. Because in my mind, I like having the, just in the back of my mind knowing that if a relationship goes south, I don't have to see that person all the time. That's a good thought. Don't yes. shit where you don't eat. shit where you eat. Yeah. Like I'm there to do stand up. I'm not there. Like you know. Yeah. I don't want to have to worry. But all this other stuff when I just want to do bits or something. Right. You know? It's just a lot. That is a lot. So that's a good okay, so that's Yeah, so no stand up. No stand ups. Um what else? Gotta be five ten. <laughs> no, I Thin don't really legs. care about that. Yeah. Supermodel. Yeah. Has to have at least three Vogue covers. <laughs> and the best is like if it's outside of a sphere that I know as well. Uh-huh. Like for some reason You wanna a- date like an engineer? Or you wanna date someone uh, who's not yes, in the business? Or so, yeah, kind of. Like that someone who has a regular thing. Cause I forgot who said it. maybe it was maybe it was Al Madrigal another stand up comedian okay yes of and he course. said uh, like one headshot per couple <laughs> and I think that's such a profound statement I know there are exceptions to the rule that's amazing but if you want to generalize I yeah. think that's pretty great that's great one headshot per couple one headshot per couple that's true because it's not a normal thing uh, like I don't I don't know if I need two of that in right. A, in a, like, I, I kind of like them, that there might be someone grounded, a little more reality. Normal. I like that when I come home, it's normal. It's yeah. Not, it's not like Hollywood, Hollywood all the time. Show yeah. yeah, yeah. That's even why I like Tarzana. Like when I go home, it's like regular people walking about. It's yes. not, you ever go to Echo Park or like Silver Lake or Los Feliz? It's just like, or like it's, like, it's a stage coffee. all the time? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> or Jones on Are third. you ever off? Or are you a sim your whole life? Yeah. Jones on third, people just auditioning as they're walking. Kind in. of. You, you ever see people jogging on sunset? Uh, yes. Go, why in, don't like, you make up? Jo- yeah. Like if you really cared about running, you would jog on Pico or there's no one. No one. Yeah. If you really wanted to sweat. Were, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like half jog and <laughs> half like casting opportunity. They have their phone number on the back of their track yeah. jacket. Yeah. They have their head shot just on their glistening chest. I literally feel the same way. Yeah, so I, I like. So you want someone who's not an, an, at all in entertainment? Yeah, doesn't care. Like, m- might think it's neat, but has their own compass and right and likes what they're doing and isn't so like Hollywood obsessed. My husband actually said the same thing, and he actually wrote it like in his book. He's like, the next time I get married, it's gonna be someone who has nothing to do with Hollywood. I want to date some girl who works on a goat farm. <laughs> like he was like, I don't want to marry yeah. someone who is in this business. Yeah. And then we ended up getting married. But I feel like sure. I, I'm not like, I mean, yeah, like I have the podcast, right. yeah, I do my Instagram, but I like don't do stand up anymore. And right. I don't do, you know what I mean? Yes. Like I'm kind of more. Uh, and like I said, there are exceptions to the rules, like, yeah. like, uh, like Kirsten Bell and Dax Shepard. Yes. Is it Kirsten or Kristen? They're a great couple. Yeah, they make it work. <sighs> Is it Kristen or 
Kirst- I think it's Kirst- Kirsten. Oh fuck! Bell. Oh no, Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. It's Kristen, Kristen Bell. Bell. Yeah, it's Kristen yeah, Bell. Yeah. They're really cute. Yeah, they're a cute. Couple. They make it work. Mm-hmm. And then there's also Tom Segura and Christina. Oh Pizzi. yeah, they're yeah, they make it work too. And then and Natasha make- and Moshe. Yeah, and Natasha and Moshe. So yeah, it can True. happen. Yeah, you got to keep your you got to open. options open yeah. because you never know. Yeah, I guess so. And sometimes, like the people that you think you're not going to get along with the most, uh-huh. you can end up getting along with. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like I, I actually, when I matched with my husband on Raya, uh-huh. that's how I met my oh, husband. Oh, really? Dead. You know, I don't really match on there. You don't? I don't. You just reject everyone. No, it's not even <laughs> it's that. Just everyone, it's you rejecting. No, no, no. I think I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not even. Maybe I just have bad photos. Are you on or there? Maybe I'm just a gargoyle. Still? Yeah. And you're not getting any dates? No, not really. Really? Yeah. That's weird. But it doesn't make sense. You're funny. They don't know that on Raya. Yeah, but that's true. Yeah, but but they could look you up. That's weird. Yeah, I don't know. How long has it been since you've been in a My photos are like this, though. (laughs) Just a drink at a nightclub, and I'm like so shiny. (laughs) And I'm doing this. You're on the phone. <laughs> it is, it is, You're doing it is, the hang tan. Yeah, you don't yeah. surf. <laughs> You've never been to the beach. <laughs> and I just have like all these pimples. And like, no. Do you? Oh, why would I oh, have okay. it as my? That would be horrible. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm not matching. That's crazy. Wow. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of the dating? I know you don't like talking about right, it. It's not right. part of your yeah, my thing. thing. But it's okay. What? Are like, you like? What do you think of it in Los Angeles? Like, do you think it's hard? <laughs> this is like every stand-up comedian's premise, you know, like it's hard dating in LA. <laughs> Guys, it's so hard dating in LA. I just bro- I'm just opening you for your bit. Yeah, yeah. This is like comics on leash so with Byron you think Allen. Dating in LA is hard. Yeah, that's like the most the easiest setup. <laughs> um, yeah, I would think so because it it kind of alludes to the one hatch up or couple thing. Everyone, I think it's hard to do that when everyone is so career focused. They are. You know, myself included. So. You're gonna get a derivative of what that regular what re- regularly is in a different town. Totally. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's. Do you want to get married? Yeah, yeah. I and think eventually, yeah, stuff? yeah. Yeah. But it's tough. Like, how do you reconcile? Because you've been so career driven for so long, and then this is, this is a uh, you sacrifice this for that. You know. You sacrifice. When when do you do it? And like, life isn't like a switch. So yeah, I got to figure it out. Yeah, because everybody puts their career first, and then. Yes. You're 52 and you're like, right. oh fuck. Yeah. I put my career first mm-hmm. for so long and I'm 52 mm-hmm. and I want to have a kid. Right. But John Stamos, he just yeah. got married and had a kid. I have this thought too though, like <laughs> it's so easy for guys to be like, hey, well, you know, Clooney didn't get it. <laughs> and you go, you know you're not George Clooney, <laughs> right? You haven't booked anything in your life and you're like putting yourself, you know, like, Clooney didn't get married until like they're peas in a pod. <laughs> you don't have a house on the Italian you Riviera. Don't, yeah, you don't you have nothing to offer, right? And, oh and you, you, you're putting you and Clooney in the same Right, breath. guys, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Guys like me and DiCaprio, <laughs> we could do it later in life. Right? Leonardo DiCaprio hasn't been married. His girlfriend's 23. He's like 45. Yeah. I, I have this thought with Leo. I think, like, if you're a girl and you get invited to, because they showed that girl who was, was it at the Oscars? Uh-huh. Camilla treat, Maroney. Treat that as marriage. Yeah, that, that's like that's, any girl dating Leo. If if you're on camera for a thing with him, take the W. Yeah, that's marriage. Can I tell you something I noticed that was really funny at the Oscars? Yeah, and I don't know if anyone else noticed this, but it kind of like bums me out. Like, you know how when like Joaquin Phoenix, for example, who I love, yeah, and I think he's amazing. I've met him and he's cool uh-huh. and whatever. He's with Rooney Mara, uh-huh. and he he won his Oscar, and when he won, they were like Joaquin Phoenix, and she leaned over to like kiss him. And he just stood up and just, he just like, like, fuck you, bitch. Like, bye. Like, I gotta talk about baby cows. Out of my way, bitch. Yeah. I gotta talk about baby cows. We take the milk. Like, it was kind of like, I, that's, that's like, that kind of bothers me. Cause I feel like some of these actors are like so self. Of course, that's part of it though. Like, but they're just like, bye. Pff, like, ba- bye. Like, she was like, uh, like leaning in, like, honey, you know, like, give my wife a kiss. Yeah. Give the person next to you a kiss. That you love, that's helped you, you know. You forgot. He, he just was, fucking he was so juice. Like uh-huh. <laughs> peace, bitch. I always love when they do the nominees, just when when it's Oscar time, and you know they're all sitting in the chairs. And, yeah, and, and they then, zoom in on their face. Well, that and then when they cut to their performance, 
and then you're just watching this person like lose their mind for for like ten Joker. seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's just funny, and they cut back to them. <laughs> So you're just watching like five different actors lose their minds, just clips of them losing their minds. And they go, yeah, 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 yeah. I loved you forever. <laughs> and then and then like five more of that. It's like, dude, I'm versatile. Yeah. Like, look how calm I am right now. Uh-huh. Can you believe that was even me? It's <laughs> such a juxtaposition of them losing their mind in a film, which is like acting. True. And then, and then cutting back to them. <laughs> that was me when I lost my mind for a role. But I'm sane now. Yes. And I hope I get an award for, yes. for when I went insane. <laughs> I know. It's kind of fucking crazy. Yeah. I feel like I would be too anxious to ever be that successful. Yeah. Like, do you ever feel like when you start reaching a lot of success, you get more anxious? Mm. Or no, you're not like that? It depends. I love stuff in my comfort zone, you know? Yeah. And I know it's good to jump out of it every now and then. Um, but I think th- that can happen. Oh, oh <laughs> damn, oh. Raya! <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it's your mom. How weird! It just started playing in my pocket. That, is that what is that ringtone? That's just music I was listening to. Oh, <laughs> now you know what <laughs> I listen to. This is like again. transcendental meditation music. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was like uh, a remix of "Earthquake" by Tyler the Creator. Dope. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Thank That's you. Sick. Um, okay, so. It's been an hour, which is mm. insane because it's been so fun Thank having you. you here. Yeah, but I know I can't have you all day. You got to get back to Tarzan. <laughs> yeah, and just incessantly try to match on Ryan. <laughs> Why? Well, guys, now that Why? you know he's on there, fucking get on there and uh, uh, match with. I mean, you're probably gonna reject everybody anyway. You d- rejected me, not to make you feel awkward. No, it's because I know you too well. You don't know me. I know you a little bit. Nah. Come on, yeah, from the stand-up days. Kind of back in the day. Yeah, a little bit. But it makes me feel good that you tried. <laughs> That's like a nice little self-esteem boost for me. <laughs> that you tried? Yeah. No, no that like, because I didn't know that you tried. I just, you know what it was? Is like, I, I love- You hit rock bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it was an accidental swipe. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah you go, no! no! <laughs> oh, thank God he didn't swipe. <laughs> yeah. No, but actually it's like, I love laughing. Uh-huh. And so I automatically was like, I just want to match with everyone funny. Cause like, we'll just be laughing all yeah, the time. Yeah. Our whole life will just be a big laugh uh, fest. Uh-huh. <laughs> like that's what my idea uh-huh. was. But then, you know, it's like just... after talking to you now, I just, I see uh, <laughs> that's not the case. And... No, that is no, totally not the case at all actually. Yeah. And it's so funny cause the one thing was when I did match with my husband, uh-huh. I almost didn't go on the dates because I was I had, you know, preconceived notions. Everyone was like, oh, yeah. like he has diseases. He, you know, he's fucked a bunch of girls, all this stuff. And like, you know, but but then I opened my mind and I just started I started before I d- dated my husband. I was going on dates with people that I was like, I would never go on a date with this person, but I'm going to go mm. just even for like the experience. I'll do that now because like. Yeah, younger me, sometimes I'd be really closed off to yeah. say, like, oh, I don't do that or I don't want to do that. Yeah. But as I've gotten older, I'm like, oh, let me just do it for the experience yeah. or let me be open to it at yeah. least. What's the harm? Or you get a good story out yeah, of it. Yeah, or you get a good story out Or of like it. a bit. Uh-huh. Or like or like surprisingly, I got so, along so well with my husband and I learned that he was actually like a total hopeless romantic and not like a player. Yeah. And all these people were like, yeah, he f-. my friends were like, yeah, he fucks a different girl every night. Like blah, 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 blah. He like doesn't even leave the house. Like yeah. he just is like so to himself. It's oh, like so that's funny. That's my dream. I love yeah. people who don't like to go out. He doesn't like to go anywhere. He's very mellow. We're very mellow. We watch Netflix. Uh, like yeah. that's all we do. We don't go to clubs, we don't drink, we yeah. don't go parties, like we're both just so boring. But it's great, uh-huh. and I love it. Yeah. Like I'm like, fuck, this is so crazy. Like so not, but I didn't just expect being it. being open to it. Being open to it, so. You gotta just, I I just say yes to, everyone. yes to everyone. Be yet, your yes year. My yes year. <laughs> I, you end up dead. Yeah. Or, <laughs> I or, see on the news, people <laughs> murdered. And all these terrible commercials and, and TV shows. I just said yes to everything. That'd be a cool like documentary, just saying yes say for yes. the entire year. Hey guys, I decided to say yes. I decided to say yes for the whole year. Let's see what happens. To everything. Yeah. Some bomb ass. <laughs> then then it's in memoriam at the very end. <laughs> it's a great doc. Oh my god, I love it. It's been so fun having you here. Thanks I for literally me. laughed I'm so glad hard we that I got to do it. I cried. 
you're making me cry oh, laugh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, guys, follow Fahim. He's Fahim Anwar on Instagram. You yes. have your website, which is just FahimAnwar.com. FahimAnwar.com. You can check out his tour dates. Go yeah. see him. He's very, very, very thank funny. You. You'll be thoroughly entertained as you were during this podcast, That's I'm nice. sure. Thank you for all your wonderful reviews on iTunes. I read all of them. We've got like thousands of great reviews oh, cool. on iTunes. I'm so happy that something in my life is actually working out for once. <laughs> it's yeah. really nice. I have a special. Like I put it on YouTube. I think it's on Amazon Prime as well. Yes. My first stand-up special that I did, it's called There's No Business Like Show Business. So There's No Business Like yeah, Show check Business. Out. Go check that out right now, guys. Thank you so much for being here, Fahim. Thank you for being here. Any Thank last words of me. advice for the audience? Be open <laughs> uh, to life experiences. Don't be so quick to shut them out. Yes. And don't shit where you eat. Don't, don't shit where you eat. Yeah. Woo. Bye, guys. Perfectly one hour. Yeah. Whoa. Good job. I like the, I like the whoa.